game. Tariq Elite on Tariq Elite Radio. You better recognize. When I think about you, baby, I can't help it. Help it. I lose all my focus and I just can't stand it. So excited every time I hear your name. Your name. And you don't reciprocate, and it's a damn shame. Oh, oh, oh. see, all I'm trying to do, girl, is, is give you my time. And you know, you better not move too slow, cause I'm moving on. I'll take the chance and roll the dice. I might miss out on the love of my life. Time, so I'll get to it. When I look into your eyes, I can see right through you. And you don't feel the same way that I do. Oh, Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Mac Lessons Radio Show. Glad to have everybody tuning in. This is your gracious host, Mr. Tariq Elite Nasheed. Ready to chop up some good game for all you wonderful ladies and gentlemen out there in radio land and today's show is brought to you by the new album by the artist named p dash he has a new album called dying for a living you can get the album at imp-dash.com or cdbaby.com slash p-2 the songs are also available on itunes and amazon let me play a little clip of p dash's Joint real quickly, just a real quick snippet, real quickly. For the ladies, Coming uh. out of sticks, not just because we in the woods, don't mean niggas ain't getting bricks. But everybody bro, they sent me to give y'all a fix. That is P Dash, ladies and gentlemen. And like I said, you can get his album right now at imp-dash.com. And today's show, ladies and gentlemen, is also brought to you by Twomp Clothing Line, ladies and gentlemen. That's Twomp, and you spell that T W A M P Clothing. And you can go get their gear at twompclothing.com. Today's show is also brought to you by Beyond the Conviction. That's a job readiness DVD. And it helps at-risk job seekers and ex-offenders get their money on and get their jobs on. It helps you expunge your expunge criminal records and they help you get career counseling. Real good project, man. And you can get their DVD at beyondtheconviction.org. Or you can give them a call at 816-842-842. 4935, ladies and gentlemen. And today's show is also brought to you by TariqElite.com. That's where you can get the brand new Liberty t shirts. You can get the No Justice t shirts. A lot of folks are feeling those No Justice t shirts. So that's at TariqElite.com, ladies and gentlemen. Let me put on some Mackie music so I can chop up game with the family. And for those listening live, you can listen live to this show at TariqLive.com. You can hear all my live shows at TariqLive.com. And the phone number to call in is 818-850-5404, ladies and gentlemen. So today's show, later on in the show, the topic, I'm going to talk about tips on tightening up your mouthpiece. I want to help cats improve on their mouthpiece game so you can spit that hot fire, not just in relationships and in dating and and in things of that nature, but just to have a general tight mouthpiece. That's very important for cats to have that tight mouthpiece. And I want to give some cats some tips on that. And let me get a couple of calls before I really get into some good game. What's up? Who's calling? All right, somebody hung up. Y'all got a call and y'all got to say what y'all have to say. We can't slow the show down with the, the hanging up of the calls. But before I get into the calls, let me get into this. A few things that's going on in the news and the media. Now, today, George Zimmerman was pulled over in Texas. He was running. He, no, he wasn't running a red light, but he was speeding. They, he was on the highway speeding 
and they pulled him over and he had a gun in the car. Now, they, they let him go. But it's just very interesting that this guy is traveling all over the country. He's in Texas right now. He's traveling all over the country. Still packing, still strapped. I mean, that really speaks volumes. And the, and you can see the video of the cop pulling him over. And the cop was pretty friendly. The cop just let him go with a warning. So the cop almost popped his collar to him. Now, you know, if they pulled over brothers, they would have thrown the book at him for speeding. But the cop let him go with a warning. And the cop said, you know, we, we, we usually give people warnings for speeding, which is bullshit because I've been through Texas. And not only did I get tickets in Texas, when they found out that I was going out of town or I'm from out of town, they literally made me pay the ticket right there. I never forget that. I never had that happen before. I got pulled over in Texas years ago. I was on my way. I was going from Atlanta to California. They pulled me over and they're like, well, since you're going out of town, you're going to have to pay that ticket now. We can't let you go until you pay this ticket. I ain't never heard no shit like that. I don't know if it was a real law or whatever, but this motherfucker made me put some money in an envelope and all this old shit and, and pay for the ticket right there or go to jail. But I digress as far as that. I just found that very interesting that, that Zimmerman, is he's in Texas right now. So all you people in Texas, y'all beware. There's a killer on the loose and he's strapped. So y'all beware of that. What's going on? Who's calling? Hello? Okay, what's up with these calls? Man, y'all got to keep this thing pimping, man. I want to talk to some people on the phone, but if y'all calling up and y'all phones are janky and... Niggas just calling up for the sake of calling up. I'm going to have to shut the calls down. What's up? Who's calling? What's up, man? Hey, how you doing? Well, this 100, man. I'm, from, I'm in Arkansas and Little Rock, but I'm originally from Dago. I just got a quick question for you, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Uh, yeah, I, just, I mean, my daughter, 13-year-old fam, and uh, when, when is, you know, I don't want to overwhelm her with the game too much. What's a good time to start a relationship with your daughter with game? Right now, definitely right now, because they're 13. Right. Yeah, they're teenagers now, and best believe little dudes are trying to campaign at them. You better believe right. they're trying to holler, so you better right. be lacing them with game now. Especially right. when they're That's why I've been doing a little by little, but I just don't want to overwhelm her. You, right, you understand right. what I'm saying? Because right. at her age, I just wanted to go, you know, go all the way over over her head. Right, but you, you want to teach it to her enough where she can understand it and she can process it. You don't want to overwhelm her. Let her process it, and, and they'll start inquiring more about certain things. But, you know, that right. you, you'll be good, okay. man. Thanks for the call, man. Another thing in the news, did y'all know that there was a riot out here in California in a place called Huntington Beach? There was a riot a couple of days ago. Straight up riots, thousands of people rioting in Huntington Beach, California. Now, most of you haven't even heard about this. You know why you haven't heard about this? Because the media, they barely mentioned it. They've been kind of quiet about this riot. And the reason why they're quiet about the riot is because the riot was in Huntington Beach and most of the people rioting were young white kids. White teenagers, white youths. And it wasn't about Trayvon or nothing like that. It was just a surfing event. All of a sudden, all these white kids decided to wild the fuck out. It was thousands of them tearing up shit in Huntington Beach. I mean, they were smashing windows, throwing over porta potties, turning over cars fighting they were beating the shit out of each other there's several clips of that on the internet they were turning it all the way up out here no mention it well the, there's a slight mention in the media but they didn't go in they were stealing bikes out of bike stores they were showing the hell out and they just kind of brushed this aside in the media and, th and the reason why i'm bringing it up is just that 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 double standard i just wanted to point out because whenever we do some shit like that. Oh, my God. It's Armageddon, the National Guards. Y'all know when they had the little so-called Trayvon riots, which it was, really wasn't a riot. It was protest. Yeah, most people for the whole Trayvon Martin thing, they were walking around with protest signs. They weren't really tearing up too much yet. But when people were out there on Crenshaw Boulevard, the 20 or 30 people that were out there wilding out, not really tearing up stuff, but just running around with signs. Oh, they had helicopters. Na it was international media they had that shit all over the place but these kids out here tearing up shit in Huntington Beach nothing 
They just brushed that aside. And, and the reports are saying, well, they were acting unruly. So they, they didn't refer to them as savages and animalistic and, and none of that shit. So this is why a lot of people point out the racial hypocrisy because there is a racial hypocrisy there. So pretending that it's not there just makes the whole conversation look very silly. So people have every right to point out the racial hypocrisies and some of the the stories that are out here. When black folks do shit, if it's a small group of black folks, it's all of a sudden, what's wrong with black people? What's their problem? Why do they act like this? What about, what's with their culture? Well, I ask the same thing. Why are these kids out here wilding out? And it was really for no reason. They just decided to wild the fuck out. And there's several clips on the internet. So I asked the Bill O'Reilly's and the Fox News type of people and the Zimmerman supporters, what's wrong? Is there a breakdown of the white family? Uh, what, what's happening? You know, I blame Miley Cyrus. I blame people like that for being a negative influence on the white youths. Is there a breakdown of the white family? Is it, I blame shows like 16 and Pregnant where you have young white girls encouraging other young white girls to have babies out of wedlock and promote degenerate re behavior. I blame all of that. I blame that. Are the streets safe? Do I have to stand my ground at Starbucks? Do I have to take a gun to Jamba Juice now? We got white kids out here wilding out, riding for no reason. What is it? God damn it, I blame Honey Boo Boo for promoting degenerate culture. That's who I blame. I blame Honey Damn Boo Boo. Me, Honey Boo Boo, child. That's who I blame. Honey Goddamn Boo Boo for them acting a fool. You better recognize. You dig? Ain't that what they say about us? Just think about that. But I digress. Let me get a couple of calls before I get into some game. What's up? Who's calling? Yo, what's up, King Fights? How you doing, man? I'm good, man. What's your name? Where you from? Yo, I'm, I'm Ozzy, man, from Boston, man. I'm happy I got through, man. Good to hear your voice, man. Yes, sir. Man, what's on your mind? Yeah, I saw the comment on the zero situation and taxes real quick, man. That's, that stuff is like a theater right now. It's like a reality show, man. Shit is unbe unbelievable, man, how real. Yeah, shit yeah. Is crazy out here, man. Yeah, that's definitely as crazy as hell, man. This motherfucker's <laughs> driving around the country with guns and shit. It's crazy. You did? They're making up all kinds of shit, man. All just to get in the media, just to just whatever, man. But I, I got a real good question for you, man. Go ahead, go ahead. I was in a relationship with, not in a relationship, for like two months. I've been seeing this girl. I mean, she knew it was nothing. I knew it was nothing. We've been, you know, talking around here and there, meeting up. But she's she started getting attached, and she told me about this. And I decided to let her go. Was that the right move? So she started. I was really in, so, in, going into the relationship, but she was really getting attached to me, and you know, starting all romantic stuff and stuff like that. Because I, but I wasn't, I wasn't going towards that direction. I didn't want to play her. Was that the right move for me? Well, my thing is a lot of she probably got attached because in order to get that ass, you were probably selling her a bunch of ice cream dreams, and then she started falling for it, and then you're like, aha, I got you, bitch. And I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't like that type of the game. I don't like that part of the game. I like to play the game fair all the way through. And um, huh? you know, you, you don't. How would I do it next time? How would I do it next time? Not to not to lead a lead a girl all like that. You know, how yeah. would I how would I play it next time? Because a lot of times, man, dudes think they have to lead females on just to get that ass, and you really don't, man. A lot of females, man, they're down to do the do. Just as much as you are, but the thing is, when y'all start <laughs> selling those dreams and talking all that, oh, I'm gonna cupcake with you, and I want to give you the world and diamonds and pearls and all that shit, and then you don't deliver, then you look like a douchebag. You did. I see. This is, I see. Yeah, I think I definitely, I, I definitely made, made a couple of those moves, long moves over there. What would you say if you're seeing a girl like on, you know, on just a fuck to fuck basis? How many days a week would you say to see her so she doesn't get that, you know, that type of like how many days a week? Not even, not even, if you're seeing somebody on a regular basis, eventually they're going to think that there's some type of relationship there because you're spending too much time with them. If you don't have serious intentions with somebody, why even spend all that time with them? If I know somebody's a jump off or somebody's that, right. uh, somebody that I'm just cool sexually with, I'm not going to be spending time with them all the time because I'm not going to be fucking. I ain't got that much time to be fucking somebody three and four times a week and all that. I got better things to do. So 
just spending that much time with a person is going to send a message. So your actions are sitting on, sending a certain message. So I would say don't do all that just to get some ass. It's like you're saying all this to get some ass, and once you get tired of getting ass, you're like, ah, oh, okay, I was not really serious. Uh, so you don't don't play the game like that. You dig? I got you, man. I got you, cool man. There you go, cool, man. Uh, thank you, you, brother. All right. I wonder where that brother was from. Hey, brother, you on the phone? I was about to ask him where is he from. That accent was a beast. I ain't never heard that accent. From, I thought at first I thought it was Mexican, then African. He's Maxifrin. <laughs> he's like Tiger Woods, a Camelon Asian, but he's a Maxifrin. What's up? Who's calling? Yo, what's up? This is the real out of Atlanta, man. Hey, man, how's what's on your mind, player? What's going on with you? All right, man, check this out. I got a situation that I'm dealing with right now. Yeah. I'm 29 years old. Wait, wait, you're 29, and what happened? And I'm dating a female that's 25 years old. 25? 45. Okay, okay, so you, um, you, you, you're getting them right off the You're getting them right off the pond. You got you a cougar. Well, that's beyond a cougar, goddammit. That's a damn saber tooth cougar, because she's extinct almost. But anyway, go ahead. Okay, so you got you a cougar. Got you a saber tooth cougar. Go ahead. (laughs) All right, man. But, like, she's real disrespectful, man. You know, and, like, she is like okay first of all wait 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 wait. first of all your phone is a beast and let me let me say this if y'all date these older chicks get these motherfuckers to buy y'all a phone first of all y'all got these older women they got all types of health benefits and job security say hey look nana get me a phone so when i call the mac lessons radio show my shit don't sound raggedy so she's disrespectful and what else does she do like different niggas be coming in and out and about you know and like calling and texting her phone or you know just real disrespectful stuff you know what i'm saying but i'm, but I'm the bread you know like i'm when i bring in because i got a security job you know that i work at and so i'm basically paying all the bills and stuff but she don't know where to go wait 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 okay hold on hold on one second now let's look at your situation you 29 right. years old you got a great job are you at work right now sound like you at your job right now yeah. Okay. I'm sneaking, I'm sneaking the call right there, now. There you right. go. So you got a good job. You got. A, I mean, a, wait, no, 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 no. Let's let's really look at your situation. Let's look at your situation, man. You got an old chick, you know, not older, but she's she's you know she she got some miles on her. She yeah, got yeah. some miles on her. She's an old hoe. From what you're saying, not only do you have an old chick, you got an old hoe. Who got niggas running in and out. So sounds like this motherfucker used to have a problem with drugs. If she's 45 years old, acting like an old hoe, got niggas coming in and out, she ain't got no place to stay, that sounds like an ex-crack addict. Am I right? Yeah, I mean, you hitting on the nail. I mean, she don't, she don't do drugs, but yeah, I, she I like used your to. analogy as she, far as that. But she used to. Let's be real. You know this chick's past. She used to do narcotics, didn't she? Yeah, she smoked. She used to smoke hella fire weed. Beyond more than weed, nigga. She did more than. Do you? I, I want you to acknowledge it because you've been probably lying to yourself about it. You know this motherfucker used to be on that pipe, right? I mean, like I said, I don't know. Say, nigga, you know, you know dude. You know what what mean? you mean you don't know? You know she used to be on the fucking pipe. <laughs> I know she's been on the pipe. Dude, she everything about this woman sounds like a crackhead or, or former crackhead, and you know that. I mean, because she also tells me, like, she has a huge, like, I mean, I want, like, a sex drive, you know, like, she is, I, a sex a holic, I'm going to say that, you know, and she has to have it all the time, and, you know, I'm the kind of person where, yeah, I, I love pussy, but, you know what I'm saying, like, let's do some, do some, some more shit and just fuck all that, you know what I'm saying, I like, know that, y'all work, that, y'all that, work, we fuck, you know what she, which is, which proves even more that she's an old crack hole. That's why she likes the fuck. That's what she knows to do. And she's probably right. still a crack hole. And who are, wait, wait, wait. And you say these niggas coming in and out. Are these dudes coming in and out of your spot? Well, like, I got out of work a couple of times. And um, let's say, like, her ex um, came over here and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, because she had some of his belongings. You know, she'd make up some bullshit, extravagant story. And... I mean, I just kind of have a, like, a, I kind of let stuff slide. You know, I try not to stress myself out too much, you know what I mean? Because I ain't trying to, 
you know, go Ike on her ass. But, you know, I mean, it's, be, it's, it's about to get to that level. You know, listen, I'm not going to lie about it. I don't listen, know where to go at. I don't know? give a fuck. So, I don't give a fuck where she has to go. I want you to listen to me and stop being in denial right now. Listen, nigga. Yeah. I don't know what part of the game has slowed down for you to the point where you got a fucking ex crack addict, which she might still be on the pipe with all that shit going on. It, it sounds like you're just trying to justify having some live in ass. The game got slow. You got some old hoe who's giving you ass on the regular. You know she's raggedy. You know her background is raggedy, but you're just ignoring all that because you're glad that she's giving you some of that old seasoned crack hoe ass. And you're trying to ignore all this other shit. Dude, this chick will set your dumb ass up and get you robbed or killed. Do you know what kind of dangerous situation you're in right now? Nigga, when you get off work today, call U-Haul. Get her crack-headed <laughs> ass up out your fucking house today. Nigga, don't sleep another night now. I don't give a damn how good that crack pussy is. Get her up out of your spot before this woman sets your ass up and gets you killed. You understand she got some niggas right. running in and out the house. Them niggas can be on the pipe. Nigga, you pr- look around your house and make sure the VCR and the DVD player is still there, dude. I'm surprised she ain't smoked up <laughs> half your shit. I mean, yeah, because we stay in a good area here in Atlanta. You know, we stay like up north or whatever. So, like, I mean, I have a lot of stuff in my house. But, you know, I don't really think that she was, you know what I'm saying, like, still for me like that, you know. But it's just really a huge, like, just a disrespect for shit. Like, you know, how she... Talking to my ass, you know, just talk down. Because she don't respect you, nigga. You know why she talks down to you? Because she knows she's a crack hoe. And she's like, this nigga's fucking with me and I'm a crack hoe. He ain't shit. That's what (laughs) she's thinking. Why is this nigga cupcaking with me and he know I'm a crack hoe? That's why she don't respect you. you. And I promise you, my nigga, if I, like, if I was home and I was talking to you right now, bro, like, I don't put her, like, I talked to her about you, you know, because I saw, I just saw, you know, listen to you, know, and I got put on by you, so I saw listening to some of your stuff, and I tried to have her listen to the shit, and she just like, oh, that nigga don't know what the fuck he talking about, he probably gay, and I don't know, all shit like that. You know, and if I was gay, you know, my gay ass would put her you know, crackhead ass out. I'll put on some damn high heel shoes and trot her shit outside if I was gay. <laughs> and let, that if whatever. Fuck all that, cause you know. Hey, yeah. I, I put on some booty shorts and 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 get some boxes <laughs> and move her shit the <laughs> fuck out. You dig? Fuck all that. Get her crackhead you, ass up out the house. Yeah, she hate me, cause she know I be saying just what I'm saying now. She know yeah. niggas like me don't play around like that. She got you. She knows she got her a good simp, and she don't want this simp to wake up. That's why women, certain women, don't like me or like dudes like me. Because they know I wake a nigga up and they're like, oh, don't let my man hear this nigga. My nigga, I don't need my man hit that. He'll hear that shit and he'll wake up and put me out. And that's what you need to do. <laughs> let her ass slide. Because, man, I'm telling you, you're going to be in a dangerous situation. And this old broad, you're going to come home and some old nigga is going to be in there fucking her too. Some old um, former crackhead. A dude, think about it. A dude has you been to your see, house. You on the news if something this, like that happened, man. This chick so, has yeah. brought a dude to your house, man. What part of the game don't you understand? Uh, For real? All right, man. I, no, no, nigga. No, uh, no, no, no. All right. What are you going to do today? What are you going to do? Um, basically, like I said, man, I got to get off in this hour. So I'm going to go home. And I'm going to tell her, yo, I mean, because I, I got to get a 30-day notice anyway. I can't just nigga, out, not here in Georgia. Get the fuck you know out of I mean? here, dude. Fuck a 30-day notice. You making up excuses. Well, you know what you're trying to do? You're trying to get you some last fucks in before she go. And then she going <laughs> to talk you into letting her stay. Come on, 30-day notice. Nigga, nah. you just coming up with an excuse. Nigga, she have a 30-minute notice. If <laughs> nigga, I go down to the martyr station and get her some damn martyr passes and get her ass the fuck on up out the house tonight. Some breeze cards. You dig what I'm saying? And a chili cheese um, fry order and let her ass stop, go man. on her way. Then stop playing, nigga. You, I, mean, you, I can't lie, man. You making sense, man. So, I mean, hey, you know, I'm going to have to do what I got to do, man. I feel you, though. My job comes first, man. I got to see, too, yo. So, uh, you know what I mean? And wait, where's your kid? Does your kid live with you guys or what? No, right now, he with my mom's right now for the summer. Okay, okay, man. You get on the real, man. It's time to get that shit together, man. You're going to come home, and this, her and that nigga going to be fucking to some Johnny Taylor music. You're going to come home. You're going to hear some shit like this up in the house, man. That's what you're going to hear. Oh, God.
with a crack pipe Ooh. on the living room floor, nigga. Yes. Damn. Is that what you want? Damn. <laughs> Is that what you want, nigga? Man, I mean, what you telling me, you know, man? I think, hey, I won't have to no problem no more, man. So, I mean, I'm Oh, right, no, no, no. Time to move on, man. All right, man. All right. There you go. All right, man. All right, man. Holla. Let me know. Email me and let me know how the situation go, man. I want to make sure you are all right. All right? Okay. My God. Let me put my Mac and music back on, man. That that just took a lot out of me, man. Hold on. Let me put my Mac and music back on. Come on, dude. What what's y'all y'all killing me out here, man? These situations you guys get in and you know better. This dude has an old crack hole in his house. He knows she's on the narcotic, but he, you saw he's trying to deny. He knows she's on that narcotic. Everything about that woman says, former crack hole. Y'all niggas just be begging for a motherfucker to tie you up and, and rob you. Y'all be begging for that shit. God damn. Anyway, but I digress, ladies and gentlemen. Let me get into some game. That just chaps my ass. Please, dude who called... Call up Sunday to Sunday show, man. I want to know what your situation is, man. I want to know how this shit goes down. All right. Anyway, let's get into some game. Let's get into some game. What I want to talk about today, ladies and gentlemen, I want to give you eight tips on how to tighten up your mouthpiece. I want to give you eight tips on tightening up that mouthpiece. You got to tighten that mouthpiece up. All right? Because... Spitting that game, spitting that hot fire, man. You got to be thorough with the mouthpiece, man. You can't be thorough in the game if your mouthpiece ain't crisp. And you got to have your conversation skills crisp. And I want to help some of the players out with their game to tighten up your mouthpiece so you can communicate better. Communication is very important. You got to know how to communicate because lack of communication makes you act out in certain ways. A lot of people are very aggressive. When they can't verbally articulate themselves or communicate. Studies have shown people are more violent. The the less able they are to communicate verbally. When you can't communicate yourself verbally, you try to communicate yourself through physical activities like fighting, shouting, things of that nature. So you got to know how to verbally communicate and get your game across when you're out here spitting. Not just at the ladies. Not just at the ladies, but just in life in general. Because again, some of these tips can apply to everything in life, ladies and gentlemen. You feel me? So now let's get into some tips. Now, tip number one. You're going to want to have good eye contact. If you want to get your conversation skills intact. Because that's going to help you focus. And that's going to stop you from your mind from wandering and focusing on yourself and feeling insecure about what you're doing and what you're saying so if you're focusing on a person's eyes that that helps your game a lot so you want to be able to hold eye contact so always make it a point to hold eye contact because surprisingly that's going to keep your mouthpiece crisp because your game is going to be focused now the second thing ladies and gentlemen you got to believe in your game You got to believe in your game. You got to believe in yourself. Because if you believe in your game and you believe in your conversation, the female will believe in the conversation or your audience will believe in your conversation. Even if you're saying bullshit, if you believe in your bullshit, it will come across and, and people will accept your bullshit. Unfortunately, but that's just how it is. A lot of bullshit artists, if you women will know, women have dealt with dudes who are bullshit artists. And there's some dudes who bullshitted them very convincingly. There's some dudes out here who are very convincing with their bullshit. And the thing is, these dudes are very sure that their bullshit can get over. So at least they're confident in their bullshit. So whatever you're confident in, other people will be confident in too. So you got to believe in your game. That's going to help your your mouthpiece stay crisp. And that's going to help your game come across with people. Now, number three, ladies and gentlemen, you want to keep your mouthpiece crisp. You want to have a nice, tight mouthpiece. You got to talk slow sometimes. A lot of times when people get nervous, they have a tendency to talk very fast. They speed up their words because they don't want to get cut off or they just they're nervous. Or they they cut off words. So 
a lot of times people talk fast when people get nervous you talk fast but when you slow that shit down that helps you enunciate your words better and it gives you a calmer cooler demeanor and it gives you a chance to think while you talk so you gotta slow your game down slow the conversation down that's gonna help your mouthpiece get crisper now number four ladies and gentlemen you gotta put emotions behind your words but do not be emotional let me say that again you gotta put emotions behind your words but don't be emotional there's a big difference between having emotions behind your words and being emotional like being emotional means that you don't really have control over your emotions your emotions control you meaning if you talk to a woman and shit doesn't go your way your insecurities come out now you're being emotional like you say to a woman hey how you doing i want to get to know you and the woman says i have a man oh you got a man oh you want to talk to me oh that's fucked up see that's your emotions taking over you're being emotional but having emotion behind your words meaning that just means you have passion behind your words see the thing is when you talk to people not just women but just general audiences when you have emotions behind your words passion joy anger pain the audience can feel your words i listen to some people do lectures sometimes or give presentations and when i see people do a presentation and it seems like they're just reading that's boring as shit to me i don't want to see that I hate to see people do lectures or presentations or make a video or something where they're trying to get a message across and you might be very knowledgeable of the message, but if you're just basically reading without any emotion, I mean, shit, I can do that. People want to see a speaker because of the emotion they bring behind the words. You can go see anybody read some shit, but you want to see and feel the passion people bring behind their words. And it's the same thing in the in the game when you're out here spitting. The women want to feel you. They don't want to hear the same shit. They want to feel your words. That's why, like, when I do lectures, like, when I first started doing lectures, I would kind of have notes on stage. Now, I don't use any notes. I make it a point to never use notes on stage when I do lectures because my thing is people come to pay money to see me. I'm not, I'm not going to let them pay money to see me read. So I just put my emotions out there. I, put, I back the words up with emotions and passions. And people can feel that and people can connect with that. So it's very important to understand that. Now, number five, the fifth thing you can do to tighten up your mouthpiece, you got you got to offer a unique perspective. You got to be able to offer a unique perspective. Fellas, when you're out here hollering at the ladies, you can't say the same shit that every other knucklehead dude says. Women have, they they hear all the cliche shit. You got to really tailor your game a certain way. Make your game unique to the female. Make it unique. Make your game stand out from the 20 other dudes that tried to holler. Because that's the problem that a lot of ladies complain about. That a lot of dudes are just saying the same lame shit. So you got to expand your vocab so you can say some real unique shit and not just with the spitting in, in the clubs, but anything you do. If you're trying to be a speaker or a public speaker, People will tune into you to hear a unique perspective. They don't want to hear you regurgitate the same things over and over again. So that's why a lot of people listen to me because they know I'm going to put a, a different perspective on certain things and also bring something new to the table that they didn't know. Always bring another brand of knowledge. That's why Hidden Colors was so successful because we brought a whole bunch of knowledge that most people didn't know about. That's never talked about. That's the appeal of the Hidden Color series. Bringing knowledge that's not talked about ever. You did so. You always have to bring a unique perspective in order to make people come into you. Now, number six, ladies and gentlemen, you got to pay attention to details. That's going to help your mouthpiece get real crisp. When you pay attention to details, that gives you another perspective and that shows that you're paying attention and people are interested in that because the thing is well when women go out fellas when you're trying to holler at women women are used to niggas looking at ass and titties women know they got a big ass they know they ass is fat they know that and they know that niggas know that but the thing is when you hollering at a woman you got to look at other minor details 
and let her know that you're noticing other details. That's going to show that your mouthpiece is crisp. That's going to show that your game is crisp because now you can focus and you can conversate and converse <clears throat> on other things besides the typical physical attributes. Like when I'm hollering at a woman back in my single days, I would look at stuff like jewelry. Even if I don't give a damn high ass I had, fat, how fat I ass was or whatever, I would focus on stuff like jewelry. Jewelry is always important because jewelry usually has some kind of sentimental value. So I would see a woman, ass, titties, fine, but I'm like, hey, where'd you, where'd you get that necklace? You got that from your ex dude, your, your man? Where, where'd you get that necklace? That's very interesting. Where'd you get that pinky ring? Where'd you get that? That an engagement ring? Where'd you get that? Then we go into a conversation about her ring. And that's an interesting perspective. And that's a nice detail because she wasn't expecting anybody to focus on that. So that brings another unique perspective to the conversation. So again, focus on detail because that's going to help the conversation flow better. Now, number seven, ladies and gentlemen, don't try to sound more intelligent than you really are. A lot of guys get into that mistake. Motherfuckers be trying to sound like damn Malcolm X when they get out there trying to spit hey my sister um, I have discombobulated my emotionalities and my principal feelings upon your cerebellum and nigga you know, you know them niggas that then went to prison and read one book and now they, they know every five syllable word and they put them all out of context in a conversation don't be that nigga just talk regular just talk regular. Don't try to sound more deep and more intelligent than you are. Women see that. They're like, this nigga. Just talk regular. They they respect you talking regular. You dig? Don't try to get the Cornell West on, nigga. Just talk regular. Women can respect that. Make your shit real crisp and clear. Now, number eight and final. The final tip on how to keep your mouthpiece crisp, ladies and gentlemen. You got to go out and experience the world. That's the most important thing, fellas. Get out there and experience the world. See, a lot of times, man, your conversation is whack. You know why? Because you ain't done shit. You ain't been nowhere. You ain't done shit. You really don't know shit. Therefore, you don't have shit to talk about. Sometimes y'all at, at talking to a woman, she's interested, but now you had a lack of words. You don't know what the fuck to say. You don't know what to say because you ain't done nothing. You ain't never been nowhere. You haven't experienced nothing. So that's why it's important to experience the world. Live life. A lot of people just experience the eight city block in which they live. You got to get out here and trek the world. Experience things. And not just geographically, just socially and culturally try and engage in different things so you can have a different perspective on different facets of life see a lot of motherfuckers who ain't never been nowhere the conversation is limited and petty that's why niggas just talk about the latest rap music cliche or loving hip hop or some dumb shit they saw on television you dig what I'm saying so you gotta experience the world you gotta get out there and learn shit and then you can have a perspective to bring to the table when you're trying to spit and communicate with people Read books. That'll help you. That's a start. But just experience life. That's the best way to keep your mouthpiece crisp, ladies and gentlemen. Yo, that's been today's episode of the Mac Lessons Radio Show, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget to check out TariqElite.com to get all the brand new t-shirts and sunglasses, ladies and gentlemen. Um, check out the pay-per-view special at TariqLive.com, my latest pay-per-view special, The Game for Women. Real good game in that. Don't forget to check out Hidden Colors Film, hiddencolorsfilm.com to get the Hidden Colors 1 and 2 DVD. Follow me on Instagram at Tariq Elite. Follow me on Twitter at Tariq Nasheed. I'm a holla. I'm a holla. I'm a holla. I'm a holla. I'm a 